Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to discuss why you should not confuse heel drop exercises that you do for Achilles tendinopathy with stretching because it's two very different things and the one is helpful, the other one not. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from TreatMyAchilles.com where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. Have a look at the description of this video if you want a link to our website. Okay, so heel drop exercises. What do I mean with that? I think it's easiest if I just demonstrate. So you'll notice my step today is just a thick book. Anything will work for them really, as long as it allows you to drop down the level, below the level of the floor. So with the heel drops, you can get many forms. Some people, some people have to do them double leg at the start. You get single leg going up and down, where you drop below the level of the step. But then you also get the classic eccentric ones where you go up on two legs, lift one up, slowly down to be repeated. Now, because of the stretch effect you get down there, people see these exercises and then they think it's all about the stretch and they end up spending loads of time in that position. And guess what? Then quite often they end up really making their tendon worse. Now, the reason for that is twofold. Oh, well, there's plenty of reasons for that. Let me explain some of them. So, you know how your tendon feels quite stiff, especially first thing in the morning and tight when you wake up, and it just feels as if you really want to be stretching it. Now, that stiffness that you feel is a sensation. It's not true stiffness. It's because of the, the extra fluid and things that accumulates in that tendon and the injured tissue in there. You can stretch until the cows come home. That's that stiffness will remain, yes, it will go off for a little bit, but it'll come back and tomorrow morning it'll be stiff again. And that will stay until that injury is healed. So it's the injury that makes it feel stiff. It's not that the tendon is stiff and needs stretching. And I know this because there's actually research on this. The very expensive ultrasound machines these days that you get can also give us an indication of how stiff tissue is. So it's called shear wave something that I can't remember the third time now, <laughs> third word from. Um, but with shear waves, you send a signal through the tissue and how quickly it moves through that tells you about the stiffness of the tissue. And what they've done is they've looked at people with stiff tend uh, with injured tendons versus uninjured tendons. And they found that people with Achilles tendinopathy actually has a softer tendon than people with healthy tendons. And that makes sense because a healthy tendon needs to be stiff because remember they act like springs. So they've got to return energy for you. So as soon as it's injured, it's a bit softer. So now it can't return that energy so well. So although it feels tight and stiff, it's not actually stiff in the tissue itself. It's the injury that makes it, makes you perceive it as being stiff. Okay, so it's an important thing that because tendons that's injured do not actually like being stretched. And stretching, especially if you're going to do strong stretching, can often make your pain worse. Now, it doesn't have to be at the moment that you're doing it. It's often a delayed response, but it can actually keep that pain cycle going. And I've had patients where they've misinterpreted, or to be honest, most of the time, it's actually a therapist who's told them to really stretch and stretch at the bottom there. And then they're hobbling around. And just by getting them to come off that and stop doing it over the side of a step for a while and just strengthen up to floor level that we take all the stretch off that Achilles for a few weeks it really settles down and they can get on with their rehab. Now, besides the fact that it really flares the tendon up um, and doesn't work for the stiffness, strength training takes the stiffness away in the long run. Um, also, if you're going to force your, so what I often see is people try to go as low as they possibly can because they think the lower they go, the better. But then to get that low, they often compensate by turning their foot in or out. And then they end up straining the tendons that either run on the inside of the foot or the outside. So the tip post and the um, peroneal tendons. And I've had people actually aggravate those to the point where they had tendinopathies in those ones because they were doing their heel raises trying to force that movement. So let me demonstrate that. Um, what that would look like is, if I show you from behind, can you see that, is... If I just went to where my natural stop is, that's my natural stop. If I wanted to go further than that, I would have to drop my ankle and roll it in. But to be honest, luckily my foot hurts too much when I do that now. But at that point, I'm going to start straining this bit. So honestly, 
it's not about how far you go because also if you naturally have a stiff ankle um, or less range of motion in your ankle you won't be able to drop very far down below that level of the step so if we think of people with high arches for instance the shape of the bones in the arch stops their movement so that they're blocked from going far into dorsiflexion and it's not that they've got a defect that they've got to stretch out of it they can stretch as much as they like it's a bony block that they have so it's not going to improve and they don't need it to improve because that's their natural form so for the heel raises over the side of the step what are you meant to be doing the reason we do them is because it gives us that little bit of extra range of motion when you drop below the step that we can't get when you just do it to floor level and especially mid portion Achilles tendinopathies really like that and they do well with that if you can get the exercises done over the side of a step but you should only drop as far as you feel your natural block is and if you've got really flexible ankles and you can't get to the end of it don't even go that far you only need about that far below the level of the step if you've got that flexible ankles um, so my advice to you is do not think of it as a stretch it's not meant to be a stretch and if you're going to do severe stretches for your Achilles tendon that may be the reason why it's still sore second if you do it just feel where your natural movement is and if you've got to start turning your foot in or out no don't do that come back up because that's your normal stop that you've got there also remember do not do heel raises over the side of a step if you've got an insertional Achilles tendinopathy I'll put a link here to that because there's a different way to treat that so have a look at the information thingy there'll be stuff about that um, insertional tendinopathies in there as well um, good I think that's it let me know if you've got any questions specifically about this as well and if you want to know how you can get treatment for your Achilles tendon we do video call assessments as well as treatment plans and follow you up over several months to get you through your whole rehab you're welcome to take a look at the description of this video there's a link to our website there have a good day